has the momentum squarely on their side in the CPU market right now, so it's no wonder many gamers are turning to their products when building or upgrading their gaming CPUs. But deciding to go with AMD is only the first step towards picking out the right CPU for you. Why is that? Well, there are no fewer than three brands of CPUs offered by the so-called Team Red. We have Ryzen CPUs, the Threadripper CPUs, and the Epic CPUs. And how exactly do these three subtypes of CPUs differ from one another? And more importantly, which is the best type for gaming? The answers to all of these questions and more are in this video, so stick around to find out. First things first, let's go over some of the defining characteristics of these three CPU lineups. The Ryzen CPUs were released in 2017 and they're what put AMD back on the proverbial map. Ryzen CPUs are further divided by their price and performance into four groups. The entry-level Ryzen 3 CPUs, the mid-range Ryzen 5 CPUs, the high-end Ryzen 7 CPUs, and the enthusiast-level Ryzen 9 CPUs. So everything you could want in a PC is already covered by Ryzen. From budget models to powerful workstation-oriented CPUs, that pack loads of computing power. The Ryzen Threadripper CPUs exist one link higher on the CPU food chain. This brand is comprised of several performance-oriented solutions that far exceed the core and thread counts of mainstream Ryzen CPUs. Needless to say, they also come with a much higher price tag. But if it were only the price and performance that differentiated these two brands, Threadrippers may as well have been called Ryzen 11 CPUs or something. This isn't the case though, as there's one key difference between them, the socket. All mainstream Ryzen CPUs use the AM4 socket, but Threadripper CPUs use a special STRX4 socket instead. This is why it's important to know which brand you're aiming for, since making the switch later will also require you to get a new motherboard. And finally, we have the Epic CPUs. They're based on the same architecture as the previous two brands, but are intended for servers. As such, they typically have higher core counts for better multitasking, lower clock speeds for better stability, and several other features that only servers can make best use of. What's more, they require their very own socket as well, the SP3 socket. So now that we've got the basics down, let's see how exactly they compare in terms of core counts, cache memory, RAM support, and price. Core counts are one of the most powerful tools in AMD's arsenal. Yes, they're important for the overall performance on the CPU, but their biggest strength is how easily marketable they are. Even casual users who won't be all that knowledgeable about CPUs made the mental connection that more cores for less money equals better value. Core counts that put Intel to shame were a big reason as to why AMD started dominating the market. But you can also have too many cores for your gaming CPU. This won't hurt the performance, but it won't enhance it either. For example, the cheapest third-gen Ryzen 3 model offers four cores and eight threads. Compare this to the most expensive third-gen Ryzen 9 model that has 16 cores and 32 threads. Already, there's a huge difference. But third-gen Threadripper CPUs kick things up a notch. Here, the least powerful CPU has 24 cores and 48 threads, while the most powerful one has 64 cores and 128 threads. Epic CPUs start with 8 cores and 16 threads, but go on to match Threadripper CPUs with their mind-boggling 64-core, 128-thread ceiling. And when numbers start to increase exponentially like this, it's easy to get desensitized and lose track of what's normal for gaming CPUs. Threadripper and Epic CPUs have enormous core counts, but that's because they're intended for use in workstations and servers respectively, which need to process large volumes of data as quickly as possible. Gaming PCs don't need to do this. They just need to be able to run all of the games you want to play without any issues. And to this end, Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 CPUs have proven to be perfectly capable. High-end gaming CPUs don't need anything more powerful than a Ryzen 7 with its 8 core and 16 threads. This will not bottleneck even the most powerful GPUs. Anything more than this is just needlessly excessive. And you should take the needlessly part to heart. In-game performance does not scale with core counts. If a game is developed to utilize 6 CPU cores, it will only ever be able to utilize 6 CPU cores. What's more important here is to make sure that each of these cores that you actually use for gaming is as speedy as possible. This is why Ryzen CPUs, which are aimed towards gamers, have high clock speeds and good overclocking potential on top of that. This is needed for gaming. 
Epic CPUs, on the other hand, have lower clock speeds and don't overclock well. But that's okay because you shouldn't overclock them in the first place. A server needs to be stable, and to this end, having a lower clock speed is better. Next up, let's look at how these three CPU brands hold up with regards to cache memory, one of the less appreciated CPU specs. Cache memory is used to store important data that the CPU can then quickly access whenever it needs to. This helps out a lot with multitasking and it's also crucial for overall system stability. Why is it then that this specification often goes overlooked by gamers? The answer is quite simple. It doesn't impact in-game performance in any meaningful way. And this is reflected in the volume of cache memory that each brand of CPU receives. Ryzen CPUs feature anywhere between 16 and 64 megabytes of L3 cache memory. Compare this to the latest Threadripper CPUs that come with either 128 or 256 megabytes of cache memory, or the Epic CPUs that start with 32 megabytes but also go all the way up to 256 megabytes, and it will appear small. But again, we have to emphasize that there's nothing wrong with the fact that mainstream Ryzen CPUs don't have a lot of cache memory. If you're using them for gaming, which is their intended purpose, they simply don't need it. Workstation Threadrippers and Server Epic CPUs do. Usually when we talk about RAM support, it has to do with the motherboard, but CPUs also play a large role in determining what the supported amount of RAM and number of memory channels is. As far as memory channels go, mainstream Ryzen CPUs only support dual-channel configurations. Threadripper models support quad-channel configurations, while Epic CPUs support a total of eight memory channels. If you're not sure what this means, we suggest checking out our video on memory channels linked in the description. In short, you can think of memory channels like lanes on a road. The more lanes there are, the more traffic that they can accommodate. In RAM terms, the more channels there are, the higher the bandwidth. So while a single 16GB RAM module and two 8GB RAM modules may have the same volume and even the same clock speeds, they won't perform exactly the same because the latter will have a higher bandwidth to work with. Dual channel is recommended for gaming PCs, but more than this isn't necessary. Again, it would just be overkill. Workstations and servers need to be able to transfer and process large volumes of important data much faster. Gaming PCs don't. And finally, we must look at the prices of all of these CPUs. Regardless of whether you're pinching for pennies or you have money to spare, we like to think everyone is looking to get good value out of their purchase. And when we say good value, we're referring to the performance you receive relative to the cost. If one CPU costs twice as much as another, but doesn't offer a significantly better in-game performance, well, then it's not exactly worth the money, even though it is technically better. The most affordable mainstream Ryzen 3 CPUs go for about $100. The most expensive Ryzen 9 ones go for about $750. But the most popular options are Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 CPUs, which are typically found in a price range between $200 and $400. Conversely, the latest 3rd gen Threadripper CPUs occupy a price range between $1400 and $4000. So even the least expensive Threadripper costs almost twice as much as the most premium mainstream Ryzen CPU. Now, you can still get some Threadrippers for less. First gen Threadrippers only covered a price range between $500 and $1000, second gen Threadrippers started about $650 and went as high as $1800. So why are third gen Threadrippers so much more expensive? Simply put, there were no Ryzen 9 CPUs prior to the third generation of Ryzen processors. Ryzen 9 CPUs essentially covered the role of lower-end Threadrippers, which is why Threadrippers are now even more performance-oriented and come with a much larger price premium. As for Epic CPUs, they again cover a pretty large margin. You can nap the cheapest Epic CPUs for about $450, while the most expensive ones will set you back almost seven grand. So which brand is the best? Well, in terms of pure specs, it's often Threadripper. Epic exceeds it in some regards, but since these are specifically server-oriented CPUs, we like to think no one is using them for anything else anyway. But Threadrippers can be used for gaming as well. It's not like they're bad for it per se, they're just the complete opposite of cost-effective if gaming is your main priority. 
So as far as gaming is concerned, the best option is to go with the mainstream Ryzen CPUs. And you don't even need a Ryzen 9. Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 CPUs are the best options for most mid-range and high-end gaming rigs respectively. Why is this the case? Simply put, they're more than powerful enough to use with the latest mid-range and high-end graphics cards without bottlenecking them. And that's all most gamers could ever ask for in a CPU. Plus, mainstream Ryzen CPUs are way more affordable. If you need better performance, you should always get a better graphics card and then upgrade the CPU if it starts bottlenecking. And that about does it for this video. In conclusion, the Ryzen, Threadripper, and Epic CPUs are all aimed at different target audiences. Ryzen is made with casual audiences in mind, which includes gamers. Threadripper is for professionals running powerful workstations, and Epic is for servers. In any case, we hope you found this video helpful. You can let us know if you have by liking it, sharing it with friends, and leaving a comment. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon to enable notifications. We upload new videos every week, so stay tuned if you don't want to miss them. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.